Can you also just tell people about the way Lula was kind of set up through this car wash investigation? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this was something that I think uh, when we see the, when I see the election, the coverage of this past election in foreign media, say the Guardian or New York Times, etc., we're seeing a lot of like columnists talk about how this is incredibly important victory for democracy that Bolsonaro lost um, and that, you know, it's very positive that Lula was able to win when those same outlets were propagating the, the, the false news that Lula was involved in corruption. And this was, goes back to a few years ago where he was sent to jail by a judge who then went on to become the minister of justice in Bolsonaro's government and who then left that government and ran himself as a candidate uh, in the election. So it, it shows, you know, the, the level of judicial independence that he, he saw himself as an activist judge. And uh, yeah, put Lula away on his trumped up charges. And that narrative, uh, both within Brazil and internationally, created this idea that the government, that Lula's first government was corrupt. Um, and, you know, that, that I remember when there was the coup against Dilma, who's the president who came after Lula, um, you know, when there was protest by right wing sort of middle class groups in the streets, they'd hold up these big sort of giant balloons of Lula and, you know, sort of prisoner sort of striped outfits and things. And that was their their reasoning, their justification to launch the legislative coup against the PT government and usher in, you know, before Bolsonaro, remember there's two years of the president called Mikhail Temer, right, you know, neoliberal figure. Uh, and that's where a lot of Brazil's economic problems started and the persecution and authoritarianism started. And then when Bolsonaro wins, that only intensifies. So there's, uh, Lula was then obviously exonerated of charges after the uh, the election, uh, the, the you know, the, le the election that Bolsonaro won originally. And all the polls showed that if Lula had been able to stand then in 2018, he would have won. He would have won because of how much of a popular figure he is. I think I remember that as well in, in Brazil, um, you know, not necessarily all of the vote is for, for, the, for the party, the Workers' Party. Uh, there's a huge personal vote for Lula because people remember his, his his last presidency in which millions of Brazilians were lifted out of poverty. Um, you know, one of the largest, most rapid periods of poverty reduction of any Latin American country. So there's a huge amount of, of, of personal attachment to him and, and what he did. So if he'd been able to stand here, the poll show he would have won. But... This judge, Sergio Moro, who went on to be Bolsonaro's justice minister, ensured that he couldn't run in that election. And they put up a guy called Fernando Haddad, which he, who, you know, who is a, a incredibly important figure within the PT, but which doesn't have that personal attachment to him in the way that Lula does. And people just love Lula, you know, like he's yeah. he's a celebrity. If you see videos of him like walking around at rallies, it's like it's like he's yeah, it's like a rock star. Um like people are enchanted by him and his character. There's so many things about him people love, like the fact that he has four on the things on his left hand. He has four fingers. Why? Because when he was a factory worker, um, he was in an industrial accident, and you know he couldn't afford proper medical attention, so they just cut it off basically. Now he only has four fingers. Uh, just small things like that, like endear him to people. Um, so yeah, there's 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 a huge personal attachment to him.